Locked On Podcast Network presents Locked On Sports Today. No Deshaun Watson, no QB can complete a pass, I guess at all. Sure, no problem for the Browns who walk it off against the Steelers. How far can this defense take them? Also, how about Tommy DeVito? And what can we expect from tonight's Eagles-Chiefs matchup in a Super Bowl grudge fest? Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 back in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. I'm Peter Bukowski, starting your day with the can't miss stories and biggest debates in sports. You're locked on sports today. Searching all major sports. Found. Let's start with the biggest story. It was not the world's most aesthetically pleasing football game, but it was incredibly important in the AFC playoff race. The Cleveland Browns, starting Dorian Thompson Robinson, get a 13 to 10 win over Kenny Pickett and the Pittsburgh Steelers in a game where neither quarterback managed to get to four yards and attempt. It was an affront to offensive football, but it was an important game. Nonetheless, Jeff Lloyd from locked on Browns joins me now. And Jeff with a smile on his face knows exactly what I'm talking about. But so Jeff, this was a quarterback and a team that the last time we saw DTR on the field. It was an ugly set of circumstances, but Kevin Stefanski showed a lot of faith in him. 43 dropbacks in this or 43 attempts in this one. How are the Browns able to pull this one out? Well, the whole thing with DTR was um, obviously it was an emergency start, the first start. Um, and the old adage of you don't know what you don't know. And for obviously for DTR, that was the case going in, you know, that first start against the Baltimore Ravens. They had to scale back the playbook um, because he just he's not Deshaun Watson and he doesn't have the experience Deshaun Watson does. Um, but the last few weeks, obviously, the practice habits have picked up and he's starting to understand, you know, what the expectations are of a quarterback you know, within the NFL. And the talk coming back from Seattle when they lost that game was if it's not Deshaun Watson this week, it's going to be DTR. Obviously, things worked out well in favor for the Browns. And, you know, that is when Deshaun Watson returned. But now here you are again. Um, but with DTR, you want similarities to your starting quarterback and your backup quarterback. That's what you want. Look, you're calling some of these design rollout runs. Um, you can do that with Deshaun Watson. And you can do that when you have Dorian Thompson Robinson. You have some similarities between the two players. Um, and no, he wasn't on today. Look, David Njoku did not help. Um, David Njoku, this was, you know, probably something we haven't seen in a few years from David Njoku as far as catching the ball a lot of balls that hit him he just didn't come up with they made the plays when it mattered um and the biggest thing for the browns coach stefanski dtr everybody was this was the pivotal game things get a lot easier from here on out as far as the competition they're playing the steelers have always been a thorn in their side always been the big brother type of thing but if they got this victory a number one it puts you in sole possession in second place but it also you put on a clear path towards at least making the playoffs they know deshaun's not coming back obviously the effort is being picked up from everywhere else the defensive side of the ball uh the offensive side of the ball with dtr and you saw they knew and you know with dtr with the tears in his eyes he knew what this game meant browns are five and one at home you know everybody used to say it was a, it was a you know a home game on the road to go to cleveland is the way that it was viewed for years with this team but he has played so much better he's so much more confident within himself look it, it should pick up from here look he's not going to go out there and play like you know Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen and these guys but he doesn't have to so that raises the question because now sitting at seven and three they're in a really good position to go make the postseason but it is a backup quarterback we're talking about a rookie not Deshaun Watson and so they're going to have to lean so heavily on this defense which has been spectacular by the way uh, so how far can this defense, the run game, Kevin Stefanski and a quarterback who can, I guess, do just enough based on this? How far can they go? Can they can they be a thorn in the side uh, of some of these AFC playoff contenders who look like they have real Super Bowl aspirations when I think Brown, the Browns organization and Browns fans in their heart of hearts understand they they probably don't this year. No, and, and I would not disagree with that. But you look at the Kansas City Chiefs and you say, yeah, they're seven and two. 
But, you know, Patrick Mahomes this year, it's just not really clicking in Kansas City like it has in years past. That's not to say it's going to change here over the second half of the season. Uh, the Baltimore Ravens obviously are, you know, viewed very high within the AFC. Um, and, you know, the landscape obviously changes a little bit from the game last week where Deshaun Watson went 14 to 14 in the second half to, you know, DTR. You don't think maybe he's going to be able to do the same type of things. Um, and maybe that's not, you know, the worst thing in the world. You know, the Browns, this is a team that's not expected to ever be in playoff contention. So to go twice, hopefully within four years, I'll be able to make a little bit of noise. They would be going in right now, currently as the highest wild card team within that. So, you know, these are everybody, you know, you get so caught up in, you know, can you win it all? And, you know, for a lot of franchises, that is the goal every year. It should be the goal for everybody as, you know, we all, we all know that, but you have to consider a franchise that was, you know, pretty much dormant for, you know, a couple of decades since they returned in 1999. And here they are a consistent product pretty much year in, year out. Um, but this is a really weird year in the NFL. I mean, you look at the Josh Jobs of the world, the amount of rookie quarterbacks that have played this year in the NFL. It's hard to believe that something kinky is not going to happen once we get to January because this season to this point has been, you know, obviously a lot of weirdness within the NFL. Stay up to date all year on the Cleveland Browns by subscribing to Locked On Sports today and Locked On Browns on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube. Thanks for making Locked On Sports today your first listen. Coming up, Tommy DeVito. That's it. That's the tweet. Before we get to why the Cowboys... They beat another bad team. We're into the second half of the NFL season, and now is the best time to turn your sports knowledge into cash with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 back in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, what are you waiting for? The app is easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, teasers, and more. A hit on a money line bet this week. I hit on multiple uh, spread bets, and I even hit a teaser this week. In fact, I swept my bets this week. Tonight's Monday Night Football will not include Taylor Swift, but it will include the Chiefs and the Eagles in a possible Super Bowl preview. Of course, a Super Bowl rematch. FanDuel only has Kansas City favored by two and a half at home. Over Philly, you can also combine bets for an even bigger payout. Same game parlay is a great way to enjoy watching sports. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On and do the NFL season right. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports today, here for you 24-7 Covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. The Cowboys, they did what they do, and they beat up another bad team in the Panthers. Big, quote-unquote, big win over the Carolina Panthers, 33-10. Before we get into the specifics of this game, was this an impressive win for you? Sure. I mean, look, you, you, you can't make the other team more impressive. Like you can't, you can't make your, you can't make your own schedule. You can't make the team that you're having to face the, uh, uh, you know, every week more impressive to make your wins look better. Um, all you can do is cover baby and good teams win. Great teams cover. I'd learned that from the great Mark Smosier and, <laughs> Uh, and, and honestly, it's, it's, it's held true. I mean, look, I, I think what we, I think this is, this is one of, this is why this is a trap game, right? Is that if the Cowboys had come in here and done what I was talking about all week, what I was afraid of that they would do all week, they would, they started start flat and continued it unable to score points, unable to do things. I think that that would have been a, 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 a negative. The fact that they didn't, that they're avoiding the things that, that the previous Cowboys bad teams would do, right. Is, which is, you know, playing down to their opponents. I think that that's the big difference this year. Sometimes you have to sweat out betting a team minus 10 and a half. This was not one of those games. The Vikings and Broncos duked it out a mile high on Sunday night. For me, this is turnovers again. And, and this is like the sixth time this, this year we have said this. You can't go 0-3 on the road in turnovers. You can't mm -hmm. fumble your first drive away. You can't do back-to-back -back turnover crap. And that's what they did. Alexander Madison fumbles. Broncos go down and kick. 
and then you throw a hideous interception based off of a Ty Chandler blown block. There is so much. I don't know if, about you guys, but for me, my mentions are on Twitter are a slot machine of Madison hate. And yep. I feel like Ty Chandler made the same mistakes, honestly, uh, that that Madison did, but just looked a little faster doing it. <laughs> So I, I don't know. The, the whole room ha- had a, a good night until it wasn't a good night until the, the the turnovers happened. But they did run really well on the, on that Broncos defense, which a lot of people do. Um, but it just it feels like you're just sort of pushing around the the landscaping on a house that falls apart when you commit three pretty bad turnovers. The Lions had to make a comeback against Justin Fields and the Bears, but at least they did and escape to the win. The Lions win 31 to 26, coming back from 12 down with three minutes to go. An incredible comeback. Jared Goff, bad game up until the end when he decided to not throw the football to the guys in the white uniforms. He woke up. Defense got a stop when they needed it. Actually got two stops, one at the very end that led to the Aiden Hutchinson the safety after the sack of Justin Fields and an incredible comeback has your Detroit Lions at eight and two for the first time since 1962. And in the association, Luka Doncic and the Mavs hosted the Kings. This Mavericks defense has all of a sudden played the Nuggets, the Bucks, and now the Kings. Those are the team playoff teams from last year that they played where you're like, okay, these are going to be playoff teams again this year. They had a defensive rating by the way the Mavs defensive rating in general before tonight's game was 118 which is not great like 25th in the NBA not good but still 118 points allowed per 100 possessions the defensive rating the Mavs have had against the Nuggets the Bucks and the Kings are as follows 136.8 wow 128.2 and then against the Kings 133.2 that is not what you want he lives at home his mom still does his laundry makes his bed and on sunday afternoon he threw three touchdown passes in an unlikely win over the washington commanders tommy devito leads the new york giants to victory a 31 to 19 win a lot of a lot of giants fans are like hey caleb williams drake may let's do this tommy devito going not so fast my friend <laughs> patricia Traina joins me now from locked on giants and Patricia, this an unlikely performance, especially after what we saw uh, the last time Tommy DeVito was on the field. How did they do this? Grit, grit, determination. You know, for all the Giant fans out there who figured, okay, they're tanking without tanking because they've got Tommy DeVito in there. Look, I mean, Tommy DeVito came into this scenario in an unfavorable situation. The game at the time was too too big for him. It was a little too fast for him. And we saw that. And against the commanders, you know, you started to see it slow down just a little bit for him. There were still issues with him holding on to the ball too long. There were still issues with the pressure and not, you know, knowing when to get rid of it and stuff like that. But t- I'll tell you what, considering he was under the duress a lot, not a single turnover, not one, not an interception, not a fumble, not one. And he made some pretty good throws. So good on him. The kid has been studying. He's been working his butt off, been enjoying those chicken parm sandwiches or chi- chicken cutlet, I think is what he likes. Chicken, not chicken parm. Uh, he's been enjoying those. And, you know, good Who on among us does not like a chicken cutlet, I have to say. Chicken cutlet with vodka sauce, which I've never had. I'm Italian. I've never had that. I'll have to try it. Sounds good to me. I'm gonna. I definitely will. will try it. I, I like to make a vodka sauce pasta with a chicken cutlet. So maybe maybe there's just some some melding of the flavors there that work. Speaking of melding of the flavors, uh, this Giants team uh, has not looked like the team we saw last year that snuck into the playoffs, won a lot of close games, was just like heart and soul. You mentioned grit. That was they won football games last year. A lot of them off grit. Um, why, why did it take so long for this version of the Giants to come out? Because you, you look at it and you go, well, this could have been the Daniel Jones team. Like, this was the Daniel Jones team last year. We saw it a bunch. Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know why it's taken so long. I mean, look, it's one game. Let's not, you know, think that all their problems are solved. You know, let's keep it, keep it in perspective here. But you have a lot of guys that I think realize that they're playing for their jobs, 
which I know sounds like loser talk, but it it is what it is. It's almost like, you know, I made this point on, on the Locked on Giants podcast that it's almost like preseason, except the games and the results count and the stats count. So, you know, you're a young player. You finally get an opportunity to go in because, you know, the guy in front of you is injured. You want to show the coach that you could be part of the future. And in Tommy DeVito's case, you know, there's some talk about what are they going to do with quarterback next year? Are they going to draft one of the top quarterbacks in the first round? Well, I don't know what the, the outcome is going to be, but here's what I can say about Tommy DeVito. The better he plays, the more he answers the question as to whether he can be a backup on this roster moving forward. Because if you had said to me, you know, a few weeks ago that Tommy DeVito could maybe be a number two backup for this team, I would have said to you, "Uh, uh-uh, no way. He's starting to show that he could potentially be a backup. I wouldn't go so far as to say he's ready to be a starter, not with, you know, the options the Giants are going to have, but they're addressing, again, those questions for the future to where now maybe they don't have to resign a Tyrod Taylor at a high price and they can use some of that money to get somebody else at a different position. I know that there are going to be Giants fans who wanted to get into the Caleb Williams, Drake May sweepstakes. And if you're going to ask Brian Dayball, he's going to say, absolutely no way. We do not want to do that. We care about culture. We care about winning. We want to do all those things. But I'll, I'll ask you straight up. Do you think winning the rest of the way is bad for the Giants long term? I don't think it is. I mean, it is for their draft status. But look, you want to teach these young guys how to win how, you know, how to prepare and how to make sure that you're doing everything you need to do to win games. So I don't necessarily think that it's a bad thing. You know, it's interesting. I put that question to Eli Manning uh, when I had him on as a guest last week on my show. And Eli said, look, winning's never a bad thing because it teaches you how to go about the business the right way, to prepare yourself the right way so that when you do lose, it's easier to fix you know, in, in the, the long term than it is as if you have absolutely no idea how, what you're doing and how to even, you know, eke out a win. Stay up to date on all the drama surrounding the New York Giants by subscribing to Locked On Sports today and Locked On Giants on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube. Coming up, we'll look at what you can expect from the one spectacular Titanic matchup of this week's NFL slate, Eagles Chiefs. and Chiefs have pretty clearly been the two best teams in the NFL this season. Their matchup tonight is going to be a ton of fun and Locked on Chiefs host Chris Clark and Locked on Eagles host Gino Camilleri explain why. I think what happened in the Super Bowl boiled down to three simple things. The Jalen Hurts fumble six can't have a turnover on offense from your quarterback that just can't happen and it can't lead to six points. The inevitable punt return that got Kansas City down into their own into the Philadelphia Eagles territory late in that game. The Eagles special teams has been much better. They cannot give up good field position to a team that has been known to take advantage of teams when you give up good field position. And the third thing, the defense has to make a stop. They have to make Mahomes think. You have to at least get two to three drives where you are able to get Kansas City to punt. When I look at what is going to get Kansas City to win this game, it come, it's really simple for me. Uh, win the turnover battle and probably win it by two. Um, winning it by one, it's it's kind of – it helps, but it's not going to guarantee a victory like winning it by two would. Uh, so if you can do that, you're going to be in a good position. But the bigger thing to me, and I actually have talked about this a lot on Lockdown Chiefs, keep the Eagles behind the sticks. And what I mean by that is keep them in, you know, first and 10, obviously they're going to, is where they're going to be starting, but get them into second and eight, get them in second, you know, second and seven, second and eight, uh, keep them to a point where they're behind the sticks, where they're chasing, where they're not able to get on the field and decide, okay, we're going to have two plays to get the next six yards. The funny thing about this matchup is neither the chiefs nor the Eagles have really looked like the world beaters. We saw them be last year. The Chiefs offense has hit in fits and starts. The Eagles defense has not been nearly as pulverizing or as dominant as we saw them be last year. And yet all they do is they keep winning games and continue to be the favorites in their respective conferences to come out and be in the Super Bowl once again. I look at these two teams and I go, I don't know how Kansas City 
is going to match up with the physicality of the Philadelphia Eagles. And yet I don't see an Eagles offense that is at least in a rhythm enough to score a bunch of points against a Kansas City defense that has not received the credit it is due. In a playoff matchup, in a Super Bowl matchup, I would go, okay, Chiefs, minus two and a half, no doubt, I'll take that. In a regular season matchup, especially with no Taylor Swift magic, I like the Eagles in this one to get in that mode of like, okay, yes, this is the best team in the NFC. It might be the best team in the NFL. They need a moment like that. The Chiefs don't. And finally, Washington finally made it into the top four of the AP poll. The number four Huskies got another star on their resume with a win over number 15, Oregon State. They knocked Florida State to number five, who also won, but lost their quarterback to injury. In other rankings news, Georgia remains number one, while Ohio State passed Michigan for number two ahead of their faceoff this weekend. Michigan slipped by Maryland 31-24, while Ohio State smashed Minnesota 34-3. One of them has got to lose. They'll have a loss by this time next week. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top stories in sports with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national 24-7 streaming channel. Coming up on the next Locked On Sports Today, will Jalen Hurts beat Patrick Mahomes on Monday Night Football? So at least until tomorrow, Stay locked on sports today. Locked on podcast network presents locked on sports today. For more episodes of locked on sports today, go to our video on demand, click on sports at the top of your screen. There you'll find past episodes of locked on sports today, plus other locked on shows on demand.